time to speak with me today. Uh, no problem at all. It's uh, it's a pleasure. It's uh, it's an honor. In fact, uh, we are thrilled with this. So thank you very much for inviting us. Uh, it will be only me. The other guys of the band are are doing other sh other tasks and doing other stuff and working. But uh, I'll speak on behalf of everyone in the band. So thank you very much for the invitation. Uh, you're very welcome. Uh, how is the recording process for Persephone? Oh, <laughs> that's funny because it was Persephone was 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 written during the pandemics. You know, uh, lockdowns, uh, nothing to do. Uh, we got time to to think. Um, we, we before the pandemics uh, around three months, four months earlier, we had we had launched uh, we had release the, the second album of the band, but we didn't get the time to promote it, to do anything for that, do concerts, which is the most important thing for a band, of course. And um, uh, we had this thing that, well, what can we do? Uh, I don't know, let's write, let's write this, the third album. We need to write something new, something fresh. We're, luckily, when this all passes, uh, we have some cool stuff to show to the world and that's how the writing process started we have we had plenty of time and i took care of the guitars and the orchestrations and the other guys took care of their own stuff for the album we started working from home uh, initially there were two, there were two songs in the album that were written in the in the rehearsal room uh, organically or if we can speak like that, that way, and and then, well, due to the distance, we we wrote the rest of the album far away from each other, but um, it was fun to do. Um, it really helped a lot to pass the time during pandemics. Sure. Um, <clears throat> we wrote the album with patience, not uh, rushing to do things. We had plenty of time, so it was. Uh, for me, at least, and I think for most of the guys in the band, it was good. We had this time to to write uh, with tranquility and calm and focus on the stuff. Very, 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 very determined to do something new for for what we had done so far. And one of the tracks I wanted to ask you about from the album is Grit. Um, oh. I want you to talk to me about that one. About the great task. Well, the, the great song. Uh, you know, um, the album is a, is a concept, right? So uh, it's not it's not um, a line in a um, in a time in a timeline like uh, there's a beginning. The first song is the beginning, uh, and the last one, the last song is the end. No, it's not pretty much like that. Uh, the the if you Try to put the songs in a time in a timeline organized. You you can't, but um, there is a concept. Um, and the album um, to to locate the grid song into the album is it's pretty it's pretty easy when you when you got the whole the whole picture. So this is about uh, an evil entity and all that stuff. That uh, it's some kind of personification of what we lived during pandemics. There is there is some motivation behind that. We like to like to Persephone is like the COVID. <laughs> uh, so the grit is about um, the endurement, um, the what we had to to reach inside of us to surpass everything. It's about uh, humankind and, and the conflict between humankind and this entity. And in a way, it, it tried to reach, to, to, it brings the, the very worst and the very best of, 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 of both sides. And you, you try to um, somehow to manage a way to get out of it. Through sacrifice, through all the things that you have to endure to surpass this um, this difficult, this entity, this this evil that is it's crushing you with 
with all that the the malice in it it's more about that it's about um, the courage to do what's necessary to to survive um, and that courage not only from the good side if we can put it this way it's also from the from the evil side perspective because uh, it takes courage on both sides and in the end there's no really an evil or a good a good side it's 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 a it's a melting pot of both <laughs> if we can put it in this term another one of my favorite tracks is prodigal i wanted to know <laughs> Speak on that one as well. Well, the prodigal song is about uh, the hero, <laughs> if we can see it. It's about that one guy, that one chose, that the chosen one that is supposed to to represent what we can do, what we are, so we can, so we can. Uh, um, obtain a like so, a higher level yes like no the prodigal is more like a human okay it's like something fragile like a human but w it represents what we have inside what we the strength we humans have to um, to overcome the issues to overcome the problems to evolve and to find a way to move on and survive what what is bad and take take the taking the bad things and turning that into a motivation so we can be better so we can fight against the odds against and whatever it is the odd it is evil or it is a person or, or it is a system it's 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 it represents that very best that we have in us in one entity, the prodigal, the, the guy, the person that is supposed to save us, but it's not saving us like a Superman or like a Batman is supposed to save us, showing us that we can do better, we can be better, we can surpass all these issues. I also wanted to ask you about the album artwork and the artist that was involved. The hard work on, sorry? I wanted to ask you about the artwork on the album and the artist that was involved. Oh, the artwork. Uh, um, the artwork. Well, um, the cover art, the cover of the album was made by a, a friend of mine, of the band, in fact. It's called Augusto, but you can you can find his work in Iron Doom Designs. Um, he does a lot of pretty amazing jobs with several bands around the world and in Portugal with covers. Uh, he did the cover for the album. The rest of the cover art of the album was done by ourselves. We put the things together. We tried to manage things to, uh, for, for each lyric, which well, we, what will be the, the image. And at the same time, we tried to keep the same the same background of the of the artwork so there is some some coherence some something logical in the connection of the artwork alongside with the songs and what we want to transmit with it so um, that's that's the art behind behind the, the album i also wanted to ask you what can fans look for next will you hit the road <clears throat> well we are starting to hit the road very slowly. You know, we are we are a small band from Portugal, so um, we are still trying to to make our way through this all these things. We have uh, a, a little local concert in a week or so. Then we have um, our show with two other bands, friend of ours from here in Portugal, uh, on the fifth of November. It will be an and uh, it's, it's not historical, but it's one of the most um, recognizable, recognizable places here in Porto, which is the Heart, um, the Heart Club. We will be playing there the 5th of November. So we will be presenting almost in full our album. Uh, not all the songs will be in this concert, but uh, mostly. Uh, most, most of the songs will be in it. 
uh, will be more like a, a party of Persephone, if we can call it so. Uh, for the future, uh, well, we are starting yet to um, to think how things are going to to be. Um, this is not easy times for music. Everyone wants music. Everyone likes music, but for the artists that makes music, it's it's a little bit more hard than that because. Um, you struggle with uh, budgets, you struggle with cashes for payments, uh, everything you have to pay. We are on our own, we have to pay for everything so we can have a show, we have to pay for the license, we have to pay for all the things necessary to have a show. So at this point, we are looking for a booking agencies that would like to work with us, I don't know, or we can, we can, some somehow um, uh, put ourselves at disposal and our services at their disposal for for openings on, on other tours, bands, and all that stuff. Um, we have to go very slowly because uh, we, we, have, we, we don't have deep pockets for to pay all that. But uh, the, the way is, is the, the path is, is, um, is set and we know where we want to go. We, we want we want our our music to go as far as possible uh, worldwide, if possible. Um, we have a fan here and, and there, and we can say in the four corners of the world. Uh, but uh, we want to reach more people. We want to that our music reach more people and bring something cool to everyone to listen. Absolutely. And that's why I wanted to speak with you because I enjoyed the album so much. I wanted to get the word out in the States about this album. Oh, <laughs> that's that's very, 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 very good from you. We really appreciate your interest. We love that you have loved the album. It uh, really means a lot to us. Um, thank you very much for what you're doing. <laughs> and uh, I wanted to ask you, uh, how did we get here? I know the band has been through quite a few lineup changes. I wanted to know if you could talk to me how we got to this point. Well, uh, it's it's a very long story. Do you have some Jack Daniels with you there? <laughs> <laughs> I have some monster energy drink. It'll do fine. <laughs> okay, no problem. I have I have tea, but I know I'll I'll try to make the to make the um, long story short. Um, Yes, the band is starting in 2008. We have three lineups so far. Um, how this happened? Well, there's not a big, big story behind that. The truth is, what happens is we started very young. This um, I'm the last former band member of the band. I uh, was one of the first, and I'm still on my feet in the band. Um, but what happens? To be honest, it's really simple. We can say it was life. You know, people have choices, life choices to make, um, job choices to make. Uh, a lot of stuff, uh, stuff happening when we are young, and even the lead singers or the drummers or the keyboards that were in the band in the past uh, or the bass players. Uh, everyone had a personal reason to, to part ways and, and go their their way because perhaps they don't, doesn't want to play this this kind of music. That was never the issue. It, it, it was just an example, but it's more like, oh, I want to do something different with my life. Oh, I cannot combine the music and the other stuff in my life. I have to take to take decisions and make choices. So. That was really what happened, and not not much of a. I would love there was a drama, but there's no drama <laughs> for the minute. Perhaps if there was a drama, it would be a, good for a book, but it, that's not the case. Um, it was very very simple. It's just life happens to everyone, and the ones that were able to to keep going so far, um, good. The ones that needed to go other ways. We are all brothers. I uh, will say, once a living tale person, always a living tale. So we are still a big family. We we all get along together. It's just 
things happen and people make choices and we decisions to part ways very mutual and understandable and there's a lot of support on it at what age did you start your musical development oh <laughs> well uh, i'm 43 so i started playing guitar at 15. um but let's say the first three years was was just a a, a, a toy you were playing guitar with uh, with just something cool to do because we play some chores we meet we we know some girls and that stuff is cool but then again there was this moment when i i never forget this i was here in iron maiden and I hear this song from the early days of iron maiden called running free mm -hmm. and i rem and i remember hearing the riff and the harmonies between the two guitars in this song and i was thrilled with the with the sound that was coming into my ears, so I never forget that was the moment that I decided. No, I, I I want to know a little bit more of this. I want to to learn this stuff. So I I literally started to work on guitar. Uh, today, um, I consider guitar is my tool, but I like to to be a more more open wide musician uh, um i like i like orchestrations i don't i don't play piano but i would love to play piano like like i play guitar at least i will be very very thrilled with that but even so even so i'm 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 able to to write in the piano for the, for the band uh, of course i will need then someone to to get it smoothly play it but i'm able to do it but um, my music music development was pretty much around everything. I love heavy metal. I love metal. I love progressive metal. I love symphonic metal. But I even love pop. Uh, I love things like Christina Aguilera, for example. Early days of Christina Aguilera, she had an amazing voice. Every time I heard Christina Aguilera, my my head was like Jesus. How can she sing like this? Right. Um, and stuff like this. Um, um, I consider myself a very, very versatile here in music. I don't know everything. That's not what I meant. But I can hear everything. I even I love a scoring movie scores, um, and like to. And I love artists like Tommy Prophet, for example. That's why song mm -hmm. music like this is pretty much like like um, movie scores. And as a musician, I I develop myself trying to get a little bit of everything. Um, and then I use the guitar as my tool so I can try to transmit all these variable influences into the guitar. And as far as uh, um, your career, I want to ask you, what's the best advice you've been given along your way? Oh, <laughs> well, I, I never consider myself the best advisor on anything. So, but but I'll try to, uh, according to my experience, uh, the best thing I can say to someone that is starting into music and it's in love with music and want to do something with the music in their life, it's a three-party advice. First, never fall out of love with the music. Keep your love with music. That's the most important thing when you are a musician, when you want to live with music and life and, and live from music. Secondly, um, never give up or whatever the struggles are. Try to see always the, the silver lining, whatever the situation is. Um, don't let don't let the um, the bad, the bad moments and the bad things to to bring you down. And the third part of the advice is be very disciplined and very determined to to work, to keep working hard and believe in what you do. Because if you are not the first one to believe in what you do, you cannot expect others to believe in you. So that's my simple advice. Keep going.
And I also wanted to ask you, what has been your proudest moment so far as a musician? Whoa, <laughs> my proudest moment so far as a musician. I will say writing this album, Persephone. Um, it was, it was uh, from my side for what I had to do in this album. Uh, it was really, really, really something I have to to put up with some really hard work and hard thinking about what I'm doing and how things need to be done in order to sound very, very, very musically. And I had to put aside the guitar player in me and I had to become a wide musician for this album. So I, um, as a guitar player, there's so many things we want to, to do, to play, to throw into the music, but I had to stop, to step down that and think what really the music needs. What do, does this requires me to do this or to do that? And that was the proudest moment because I was, I think I was able, at least I like to think I was able uh, to, um, to do that in a very, very healthy way. And that proud moment has the song of the album called Odyssey, that I can say, which is perhaps um, the most amazing thing the band wrote until today. Perhaps if you ask me in five years now, we will have written much better things. And when you look at this one, that some so great, but at this moment, uh, that music, if, for me at least, represents what we have accomplished uh, as a musicians in the band. And for me personally, uh, it represents um, a whole lot of knowledge compiled into a simplicity of 15 minutes song, which is really difficult to compose a 15 minute song and, and try to keep it simple and healthy and and very audible for, for, for the masses. I don't know about that. That will be others to judge, of course, but that's what I think. And that's the that's the the sherry at the top of the cake of the proud <laughs> we have we have accomplished so far. And I also wanted to ask you what's the best way to get merchandise and a physical copy from the band? Well uh, you can buy it on Bandcamp. You can buy it through our editor, which is Ethereal Sound Works, or you can just send us an email and buy directly to us. And we will gladly send a hard copy to whatever in the world everyone asks. We already done that. Uh, you can do it through Bandcamp, um, but in Bandcamp is not available yet the hard copy. In fact, the hard copy of the CD are arriving next week. So oh. we will be able to send them away to whoever wants to buy the copy. Um, just ask, send us an email asking the price. It's 10 euros, but uh, in dollars, uh, there will be something like nine point and a half dollars or something mm. like that. I don't know how the change the exchange rate is right now, but I know the dollar is a little bit higher than the euro, so you should be paying less. And you should, you, you can just send out the mail, and we will send out the PayPal account. You can make the transfers to the PayPal account, and we will send the order right away to the address you request. We'll send it to whoever wants, um, whether it is whether it is the T's or the other albums. Um, we will be um, putting in our website this week uh, all the prices for the for for all the and all the packs that will we have available. So you will be able to check out livingtales.net um, all all this stuff uh, by the end of this week. Uh, you will be have. And I, lastly, I wanted to ask you if you could give a message to your fans. What would that message be? Guys, thank you very much for liking Living Tales. Um, I hope to see everyone around the world one day in a live concert. And mostly we'd like to have a drink with all of you after the concert. <laughs> that will be amazing. 
and to tell stories and hear what you have to say. That will be the most amazing thing for us. And thank you for all the support for, for all the fans we, we could have around. And please keep hearing music and supporting music wherever you are. And thank you in love for everyone. <laughs> Well, I wanted to thank you for taking time to speak with me. It's been an absolute pleasure speaking with you, my friend. And with you too, Bob. Thank you very much for hosting me. And you in name great... of the band, thank you very much for all the band. You're very welcome. And you have a great rest of your day. Well, yeah, well, now it's very late here in Portugal. It's <laughs> But it still has some fun to do with playing some Xbox, for example, or something like that. <laughs> sure. Before going to sleep. <laughs> and well, my friend, and I hope we can speak again real soon. Thank you very much, Bob. And really keep on with a great job. I already heard some of your podcast, and it's really, really fun. Keep doing what you do. It's great for the band. And you are an amazing person. Thank you very much. Thank you. And have a great night. You too. Bye, Bob.